Welcome to the worm. I got a great, eh, maybe great idea. I can't be 100% sure that this will work, but I think it'd be really fun to do. The floor needs some kind of finish to it. Kinda don't want to mess with it too much, but if I'm gonna do something with it, I might as well make it funky. It's all like everything else. It's all the floors and all the crap I build out here. It's just raw chainsaw milled Aspen. And if you spill anything on it, like you knock your water bottle over, before you can wipe anything up, it all just disappears into the floor. Not through the cracks, but into the wood. Because it's nice and dry now. So this is what all the floor in there looks like. It's kind of, it's so dark inside, you know, and just kind of short on electric lights. So I thought it'd be easier to show you out here. This is just the entire floor. It's just Aspen. I would eventually like to put some board insulation on top of it and put a new floor on top of that. But I just, I don't want to mill up a bunch of Aspen right now and like a month after finishing the cabin, start digging back into that. I'll do that, I don't know, next year or something. But because this wood soaks up so much water and if I was to get, uh, let's say a Bernese mountain dog puppy, I'm not saying I'm going to, but if I was, can't have a puppy making a mess on this kind of floor. Can you imagine everything just soaking in? So here's my idea. I got a gallon of dark green paint. This is porch and floor. I don't know that it really matters what kind of paint it is. I'm gonna do a really quick, really light sanding of the floor with 60 grit paper just to get the uh, splinters and stuff off of it. I'm gonna paint the entire thing green, one coat, and then I'm gonna take my pad sander, my battery powered pans, pad sander with like 60 grit paper and go over it once really quick. So all the ripples in the floor from the chainsaw, I'm gonna sand the top off. I'm gonna paint the cracks with a different color, like I got a dark gray just for something different so it's not a sheet of green. And then I got several gallons of water-based polyurethane. And I did some reading and apparently you can put water-based polyurethane over most kinds of paint, but definitely over water-based paint. All the products I got are water-based and they're all relatively fast drying. What I understand is you, this paint really, any paint really has to be set up fully before you put a polyurethane over it. I'm not very good at waiting, so probably realistically what I'll do, sand it, put a coat of this on, maybe wait a day or two. I'll keep the fans on the floor, get it sort of dry, then we'll sand it and polyurethane on it. I actually really think this is gonna look awesome in there. Come on, you should come, you wanna come in and see what it looks like now? Oh, you've seen it before? Tough, you're gonna see it again. There are a bunch of spots like this. This is the worst, but that's because this was out in the weather for a half a year while I was building the rest of the cabin and it was raining on it. There's house wrap underneath this, so it's kind of like holding the water. It's kind of a disaster. But this just looks really boring and gross. Don't you just feel like this whole place would look more interesting if it had a little bit of color? So that's what we're going for. Any questions? Nothing? All right, let's uh, sand something. Somebody pounded all these in already. Oh, not that one. Oh, you should definitely put earmuffs on. <laughs> Holy shit. Let's try that again. Which one was it? That one? Hmm. Much better. I assume this sander came with a adapter for dust collection, but I don't got it. Let's use the old duct tape connector. This is cool. You can kind of see what the paint's going to look like with just the high spots sanded off. Can you see that? Just the tops of it taken off. Ooh, wow, that's really soft. Kind of looks cool, even like that, with some of the dirt filed off.
You know what's unfair about this? You guys have already seen the thumbnail of this video and you know what this looks like. I'm just sanding this down using my imaginary imagination. I'm trying to picture a green floor with the top sanded off. It just, I don't know, I just don't think it's fair. <laughs> I accidentally bought a whole bunch of tubes of caulk a year or two ago. I thought it was clear and it was white. And I haven't figured out a use for it until just now since we're going to paint over all this. I figured why not do another coat on here and fill the cracks up a little bit deeper and get rid of this nasty caulk. I just crammed down some breakfast. There's a huge storm cell coming this way. It's probably half an hour away right now. You can hear rumbling off in the distance. So my thought was to run in here while it storms, paint the floor, and then it'll probably still be storming. Of course, I do have my respirator mask in here. The, other, the problem is too, that there's a couch. I don't have any place to put it right now. So I might have to do like half the floor. Then I could throw my respirator on. I could sit here, put my feet up, let that half dry while it storms, move it over. I don't know. Let's just, let's just see what happens. How often do I say that phrase? Pretty often. So I think I'm just going to give it a quick vacuum and then we'll go at it. That is quite a green green, isn't it? I hope it's not too green green. It's almost got like a little bit too much blue in it or something. It's okay to put this on the floor, right? I think that's the point. <clears throat> oh, wow. You think I could do this without hitting the wall once? I'm just thinking I probably don't need to fully cover this. Just in case a one gallon won't do the whole floor. It soaks up a lot, so. Might go a little light, leave some, leave some spots. What do you think? That looks pretty good, right? Leave a little bit in the low spots. Won't make any difference. Holy cow. I hope this isn't overdoing it. I guess I could always paint over it if I needed to change the color or just put a new wood floor over it. So don't freak out, Ryan, or anybody watching. Well, surprise, this is really fun. I love painting a bold color paint over something opposite. Like putting black paint on a white wall is really fun or dark green or anything. I have a feeling I'm gonna end up painting the wall back here. Although you're never gonna see it. Yep, <laughs> I hit it. Oh, I just hit it again. Damn, that's the downside of painting a really <laughs> bold color what you gonna do holy cow it is dark <laughs> you don't realize how bowed or cuffed all these floorboards are until you try to roll them it's like one's like this the next one's like this Can't wait. Well, I better grab the fan and a battery before I get too far away here. Be a lot easier to cut in with a good brush, but 
can't go out in the ooh, can't go out in the rain and wash out my good brush. So this is what's meant by paying yourself into a corner. Luckily there's a couch in my corner where I can wait it out. Well, where are we going to put this? <laughs> Think I got any paint on my pants? Let's hope not. I gotta admit, I probably shouldn't be walking on this. It's not coming off on my shoes, but it's got a little tack to it. But then I realized it doesn't matter because I'm going to sand all this and scuff it and make it look worn and beat up anyway. The rain just stopped. I think Tito's on his way back up here. He's going to spend a couple days making 2 by 4s for his cabin walls. Maybe I hear him. Oh yeah, it's real sticky. I just asked him to come in here and help me move the couch, but that'd be like 5 minutes from now. I don't think I can wait that long. Plus, again, if I scuff it up, who cares? See how much uh, not flat these are? Look at that. <laughs> Gotta really jam the corners of the roller in there. It's nice when you can paint underneath those uh, wall boards a little bit. Man, that is a rough board. Must have been a full chisel chain cutting that one up. Makes it so much easier to do this when you know you're gonna scuff it all up because you don't have to get it all perfect like. I'm also trying not to flood this with a ton of paint like you would normally want to to get a good to get good coverage because really soak it into the wood then it's gonna be harder to sand through. I just went over to grab myself a towel and I stepped on the wrong part. Now I've got green shoes. Hmm green slippers that is. Yeah. Let me see. I'm gonna put a towel here. Ready? Go stand on the towel. Already moved the couch. Oh. What do you think? It's trippy. Yeah. I think it's gonna look pretty good. Yeah. Well, I can see where somebody... Yeah. yeah. I just accidentally uh, stepped on the wrong spot. All right, well, are you gonna make two bees? I think so. I'm trying to... Freaking great time to do it right now. I'm trying nice to cool. wake up and get motivated. That was kind of hard to stay awake. Were you in the tent the whole time? Yeah. I was sitting here editing videos with my noise canceling headphones on, so I didn't really hear it when I looked out at this. It was raining a bit. Yeah. It wasn't too much thunder. I think the real good thunder cell went south of us. There's a couple of good cracks. And... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Enjoy the thing. Please just ignore that pattern right there. I don't know where that came from. Ooh, man, look at the bow in that one. Cup. Cup, right? Cup is sideways, bow is end to end. Is that how it works? All right, what do we think? Is it dry enough? It just has to be dry enough for me to paint the stripes. I think it'll be good enough. It's such a nice cool day that we had to take a few minutes, two, two or, yeah, about two hours to dig a little bit of a hole. I'm not sure if it's going anywhere, but if it does, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. All right, let's do some stripes. <sighs> Where's my brush? I'm not doing a very good job, I gotta be honest, but it's under the bed. This is my practice area. I'm using the smallest brush I have. It's a one inch, but it's a chip brush and it sucks. The bristles are all over the place. I just decided all I'm gonna do is try to cover the caulk. If it comes over the edge a little bit, that's okay. 
because once we sand it, nobody's ever going to notice. I know I'm not very careful in my normal work, the way I build things out here, but I am a relatively careful painter and I can cut a pretty straight line. I just can't really do it on an uneven floor with a crap brush. I know, I know, it doesn't matter. Take it easy. Okay, fine, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. It's like painting with a branch off a tree. It's interesting how different colors look when they're paired against another color. This looks quite blue, purple. When the light changes in here, the color of this floor kind of changes. I thought it was going to be alright to start. I kind of don't like it now. <laughs> it's way too green. I was going for something much more subdued, but I couldn't exactly picture it when I went in to get the paint mixed. I just saw a chip and said, yep, that's fine. That looks close enough. I might have to go get another color and go over top of this. It's just way too green. All right, let it dry for a night. Should be five or seven, but I think we'll go with one. really really not crazy about this color I feel like it kind of screwed up the problem is this is floor paint and apparently floor paint is surprise is really freaking tough I used a pad sander on it and I had to work to get through to a bunch of wood I mean I just kind of want to knock the tops off but still it's it's hardy paint so if I went and got a different color of green the color perhaps I like more I'm not very good with colors I don't even know what I'd be looking for I would then have to eventually sand through two layers of floor paint, which I don't think is really going to work. So the only other idea I have is I have that quart of gray that I painted all the lines with. I'm thinking I'm going to scuff all this green up and then I'm going to really, really, really dry roll the gray on top of the scuffed up green. And then I'm going to sand it all with the pad sander to get that wood coming out. <laughs> and then we're going to clear coat it. I'm not a huge fan of the gray either, but I think them mixed together, maybe it'll just muddy down some of the green. It's just way too like blue green. It scuffs quite easily, even though it's hard to sand through if you want to. Even scuffing the high spots, if you do it hard with this stuff, you can't get through the paint. So there I was, reading the back of the paint can, and I uh, found a couple things on here. One is do not thin this paint if you're going to use a roller, and the other is do not use this on the floor. So I'm going to do both. And I think those do nots are going to cancel themselves out and just really, really bring this floor together. I think the trick is going to be to get a very, very small amount of this paint on the roller and then maybe not push very hard. I really don't want to end up with an ugly gray floor. And because I chose the color, this is an ugly gray. Just so you know, it does say that you can thin it with water, with a little bit of water if you're going to spray it. So it's not like I'm dumping water in an oil-based paint or anything. Ooh, yeah, you're only supposed to, it said a maximum of a half a pint of water to a gallon. So that was probably higher than that ratio I just dumped in here. And yet, <laughs> I think it's still going to set up just fine. It might not. And then I immediately dropped the roller into the paint. I think this is kind of cool.
cool. It looks bizarre, but I think after it's sanded, the color will just kind of melt in there. This is the one spot I tried sanding, and I think I over sanded it. So I don't think I'll do the rest quite that much, but it's tucked back here, won't be seen. I think maybe this is the way to get just a tiny bit on here. I do realize that you can't see this at all, but you know, just stay right there, watch. I don't know, you might see something. Guessing you probably can't see the difference, but this is just the regular green here. And then, oh, maybe you can see it. Then there's like a little bit of gray on top there. Just kills some of the green. Totally tones it down, flattens it out. That's probably part of it too, is that this is a uh, flat paint, which isn't gonna make any difference once I put the clear coat on top, but for now, for now I like it a lot better. Standard green. The green with gray. It's just subtle enough that it's really hard not to walk on, so you can hardly see it. All right, it's time for the fun. It's all the fun part, isn't it? The second to last fun part, sanding. I don't like sanding, but I think it's gonna make it look cool. Got the solar panels out. I got one of the Jackery's topping off. Got almost all of my uh, Ryobi batteries charged up because it's gonna take all of them. So let's get at it, shall we? It's kind of hard to tell how much to sand off of the floor because as you're sanding the green, even if you don't go through the wood, you're still seeing all the scuffs and the green is lightening up. But I think once you put the top coat on, all the green that's just scuffed is going to go right back to dark green. So like this, although it's really scuffed and looks worn, I think this is all going to look standard green. And it's only this that you'll see through. The amazing thing is, if you walk in here with shoes on, you still get that when you walk around. So it's clearly not set up. Probably shouldn't be quite doing this yet, but I just did maybe a fifth or sixth of the floor. It didn't gum up my paper at all. So, <laughs> I don't know, I guess, I don't know. We got sanding done, 330. Yeah, I think we gotta put one coat on. So you're not supposed to roll this and you're also not supposed to shake it because you don't want bubbles in it. But you are supposed to stir it a lot. How do you thoroughly stir something in a container like that? I guess we'll just give it a light mixing. You're also supposed to regularly stir this while you're using it. I guess since you're doing a floor, you're dumping it into like a couple of these into a five gallon bucket. You know, let's just call that good, shall we? Luckily I do have a pretty monster brush here. It should work. 
I'm glad it's a nice scuffed up floor so I don't have a clean pan. I mean this is pretty set up but you know sometimes one sort of coating dissolves another. It's weird for a floor finish. It smells really good. It's kind of like a like a WD-40-ish smell. I mean it doesn't smell like WD-40 at all but just kind of that nice enjoyable smell that you're absolutely sure is killing brain cells. Okay so this is not a, at all what I thought it was going to look like when I put it on. I assume it's only milky until it dries. I thought it looked sort of like varnish when you brushed it on. Like it would soak in and the colors would pop and the grains would pop. I'm kind of feeling like I might have used some of this before. Something's kind of coming back to me. I feel like maybe I did it on concrete once. Is that a thing? fun to brush on with this giant floppy brush. It goes on nicely. I just don't know if it's like soaking in or what's going on. Stuff does dry pretty fast. Look at those uh, three or four courses of boards. All the uh, milky is almost gone. I think you can recoat this in like an hour or something. Well, now what am I supposed to do? Halfway done, can't move the couch. Maybe if I read the bottle on the dry times, it'll dry faster. Where'd it go, where'd it go? Allow product to dry one to two hours, then sand. So let's call it one hour. And that side's been almost an hour. I swear, I'm not trying to break all the rules on every product I'm using. I'm not trying to be difficult towards the floor finish manufacturers, but I just can't do any of this stuff. Like this now says that after first coat has dried, abrade the surface with oscillating buffer using 120 or 150 grit screen. 120 grit? After each coat with an oscillating buffer? It seems like it would just take it right off. I mean, I'm guessing it's a pretty hard finish. But I can't do that because I got all these ridges. If I take, I just tried with a 220 and just a light sanding takes the coat off the top of each board, like off of the ripples. You're going right through the finish, right into the wood again. So I'm just not gonna do it. Maybe the next coats won't stick. There's only one way to know. But all I got that's not gonna rip down in there is a green sanding, what do you call this, sponge pad, pad. waiting for half the floor to dry so I can scoot the couch back over. I think I'm on the fourth coat now. I kind of lost track. Thought I'd take a few minutes and work on my list. I'll do a, another table carving pretty soon. This is getting out of control. My notes for who's been carved, who hasn't, who told me their name, whose name I'm guessing, people I'm waiting to hear back from. It's kind of a disaster. Maybe next week, well, I'm, I think I'm going to build a really weird roof on the propane out in back here and hook up all four cans, just getting ready for next winter. Maybe while I'm doing that, I'll do a little, <laughs> a little bit of carving, at least get caught up till a few months ago. My back is killing me from climbing around on the floor for like five days, so this is, this is the last coat I'm doing.
What a lovely day. I decided since the inside of the cabin is... I mean, I've said this before that it's done, but now I just don't think there's anything left to do in here. But look at this place. It's great. It was really nice and cool when I woke up in the tent this morning, so I came in here about 5 o'clock in the morning, closed all the windows, fell asleep on the couch for a little bit. But it's quite toasty outside, and it's only 71 inside here, so I figured now that I got the floor done, I got everything put back, I was going to take a day off and just sit in here and enjoy it. So I've been editing some videos, reading some books, watching some videos. It's freaking great. Well, the colors on the camera aren't always true to life. Uh, the camera makes it look quite a bit lighter, but I actually I really like how this turned out. I like the kind of dirty look of that gray splotched here and there, and then the uh, sanding down, I think, really, really made a big difference. I did realize while I was doing this floor uh, that for years I've had kind of a thing against this uh, worn out furniture look. Like you get brand new furniture and they take a hammer to it and chip some paint off it to make it look old. And the irony wasn't lost on me that that's exactly what I did to this floor. However, I'm going to try to defend myself to my myself. I don't know if it's going to work. But since this floor got painted and I'm not going to take it easy on this, it's going to get all beat to hell, so I figured I'd just go ahead and do it ahead of time. I think I ended up with uh, four, I don't know, four or five coats of the sealer on here. That stuff was pretty fun to work with. I mean, it's like water or thin milk or something, and then as it dries, it just gels over. And I guess yeah, it's actually gotten a lot harder in the last day. It's been two days since I put down the last coat. It's definitely hardening up. It looks so cool to have it done. Have the furniture back in here. I really like this hanging table. I have loosened the chains up a tiny bit so that it actually floats more. It's not something most people would want in a table, but since it's floating, I thought it might as well wobble a bit. It's good. That's about as far as it goes. Not enough you could uh, spill your coffee or anything. So uh, now what do we do? The answer to that is nothing for the rest of the day anyway. It's already... Well, it's already after 3 o'clock. I've done nothing today. It's hot out there, and it's nice and cool in here. No sense in ruining that. I would probably consider uh, reeling down my coffee table in my movie theater, but Sarah had to borrow my projector for a uh, job she's doing, painting murals. So I've got no movie... Th Gosh, I've got no movie theater for two more weeks? Well, it's a rough life, but we'll get through somehow. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to come back next week, I'm considering uh, heading outside, figuring out how to rig up all four of the propane tanks and a really bizarre roof over top of it built. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that. Probably use some scraps or something. But I got to get the uh, propane cans out of the man cave so that I can rebuild that into my uh, ultimate tool room. I've kind of geeked about that, having a year-round heated workshop in there. Shouldn't take too long. It's probably like a one-week project. All right. Peace out. I gotta probably take a nap real quick, so you're not, you might as well go. Thanks.